morning. Welcome to Rise and Shine with Alyssa. I am your hostess, the consultress, bringing you cutting edge conversations from the leading edge of entrepreneurship, innovation, especially that we live in the age of disruption where nothing's going back to normal. Everything's new and up for review. And um, I have the pleasure and the privilege of connecting with some amazing people doing great work throughout the world. And today I have with me the one and only Henny Shomar. Welcome to Rise and Shine. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. I can't wait. We've had some pretty deep and fast uh, philosophical conversations throughout the time we've known each other. Um, and I just want to publicly thank you for some of the introductions that you've made to me. I've had really great conversations based on our great conversation. So you're an amazing connector. And I, I met you through the Grand Pursuit of Business, which is where all of my growth comes from. Um, so share with us a little bit about what you're up to in the world and kind of um, what you love about it. Well, thank you, Alyssa. So uh, my name is Henny Shomore. I'm a, I'm a commercial litigator in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, in my practice, I think this day and age is, especially in terms of the age of disruption, Alyssa, as you talked about, it's just going back to the basics of solving people's problems. People's problems have been changing a lot these days, but I embrace within my practice uh, the idea of when somebody comes to me uh, with a dispute problem, or a corporate a problem, something, um, to try to see what we can do to find a solution. And a lot of people say that, but I actually enjoy it because I look at it as kind of playing a chess game. Somebody tells you what game they want to play, where do they want to go? There are a number of ways that you can get there, but at least if you know what the ultimate goal is that's going to either resolve the issue for the client or make the client happy, whether it's leveraging new technologies and new ideas or just doing it the old fashioned way. There are ways to get there and there are ways to solve the problem. And honestly, I enjoy that the most about my job. I uh, enjoy doing it every day. Right on. So when you say uh, people have problems to solve, one of our previous discussions we talked about, you know, people see problems as obstacles, sometimes, you know, roadblocks, stumbling blocks. It creates like a, mountain of frustration for people when they have problems. What I loved about our conversations and what I will invite here in this open forum discussion is like, when you see a problem, I feel like you do this. You're like, Woo, how do we, how do we do this? How do we solve it? Like it creates not what most of us experience around problems is that like mountain of frustration. It creates like excitement for you. And, and I get this image of like a dog with a bone. You're like, oh, how does how do we break this down? And how do we create a, a, a win for people based on the problem that's like weighing them down? So does part of your work have to do with bringing people from that frustration mindset into like solution um, and what's what's available, what the what the solution could be? Like, do you start to dream with people in that way? Or are you more like, are you playing doctor? Like, don't freak out, I've got this for you. So the very good question. So there are times, not that often, but there are times where you have to go with option B, um, but it's generally speaking the, the former, which is, you know, it's easy when you do something every day and you see a lot of, scenarios that play out with different players, maybe different issues in play, but they're the same emotions or the same problems. Um, but the person that's coming to you to talk about it, that's now their life. Nine times out of 10, it's probably one of the most significant things in their life, whether they're fighting over a piece of real estate, whether they're filing, fighting over their business, uh, they're fighting in some type of a, a breakup of a relationship, whether it's a business relationship or a personal relationship, it consumes them. And when you can be able to work from the background in somebody who's providing services, just like you do, Alyssa, just like people that we talk to, and you've got the ability to leverage that experience, you can be able to explain to them, okay, well, listen, you're thinking about this whole thing. And the old adage my mentor will say is, is that how do you eat an elephant? It's one bite at a time. How can we start to say, okay, we need to tackle this issue but what can we do to things to be able to, okay, these are solutions that can be brought to, to deal with the problem. I'm going to hear what's on your mind. How can we get to this point so then this way you can be able to be relieved? What can we do to settle or resolve certain claims 
So then this way, the uh, exposure or the concerns you have might be alleviated. Maybe there's some common ground to be explored. Or you take a problem and you create it into an opportunity. Maybe it's an opportunity to be able to leverage to bring somebody new in that may be something that's like, oh, wow, or to leverage and create a deal, especially for business folks that find court cases can sometimes be opportunities to be able to take their business somewhere else. Or maybe, hypothetically, it's a partnership in a business where eh, the partnership's not really working out. I actually kind of want out. And it's an opportunity to find a graceful and reasonable exit. And now that person either is no longer working the business or has the business on their own or without the person that they don't want to be tied to. So there's always opportunities when it comes to issues that pop up. It's just a matter of having somebody that are seeing it with fresh eyes and are not tied into the emotions of it, which is just is specifically just dealing with human emotions and human beings, right? Listening to the person and ultimately from an outsider perspective, providing a little bit of guidance, maybe some thoughts. Most of the time they're gonna listen to you. Sometimes they're it's still gonna be raw, but you know, we always have to understand them because if we were in their shoes, we would be angry too. Yeah. And then like um I have a really good friend who's a litigator in New York. <laughs> <laughs> he is one of the most sarcastic people that I know and his humor is very self-deprecating and I always wondered from a friendship perspective like why is he like this oh but then you look you look in legal and you're like oh he's well versed in this like he has to be you know self-deprecating so people feel better about themselves like it, where humor lifts them up and like when he needs to go in and be a pit bull about something that he's taking the emotion out of it and helping people to see it logistically so that you know they don't have to add fuel to the flames of whatever emotion that they're in so it kind of sounds like bringing a measure of temperance to a situation that feels very volatile and being able to because you're well versed in having to traverse this type of path you can lead them along the way without having them get further stuck inside of the the stuck i mean all good professionals that provide advisory services have some measure of needing to address the emotional aspect because we know from many uh personal development seminars that 90 percent of decisions are made emotionally and justified that 10 percent are justified rationally so getting to the root cause of what's going on and then being able to navigate that situation and put it in place that allows the calm nature of making rational logistical conversations that produce results a reality like your your skill set is both in managing the chaos but also creating the structure around what good can come out of whatever situation arises um were you always this confident when you serve uh, the clientele that you serve now, or were there, was there a time when it threw you for a loop too? That's a very good question. And it's also a, a great observation on the issue. And your, and your colleague in New York uh, obviously has it hands-on because I will say that a good litigator who has clients that listens to them has to be a little bit self-deprecating because people already have more jokes than you can about lawyers than any profession. And yeah. it's easy to make fun of lawyers, including making fun of ourselves. And nobody likes to be in a legal setting, particularly if it's litigation. So finding a way to bring the temperature down is a very important, uh, very important skill set. Um, the answer to whether it's always been there or not is actually a very good question. I would say that that the confidence level was built over time. The, the social skills, I, I'm sure I've gotten better at them. But the one thing that I think is important that at least I've had since I was a lawyer, I can't say I've had it my entire life, but my, as a lawyer, is the exuding confidence and being able to be willing to make a decision or to make an observation. Um, and I say this about pretty much all professional service providers. If you are in a situation where you have for any reason some concern about, you know, maybe second guessing your own advice to the client or not being able to you know, chart a path, commit to the path and say, okay, we're going down this way. Here's the strategy. We're gonna build around that strategy. And then all of a sudden you start thinking about the what ifs. I think that that, that kind of creates chaos where you're trying to take chaos out of it. Um, the issue as to, to your point about kind of temperance to be able to make sure that people can understand like, okay, this is somebody who can be able to kind of keep me centered, keep me level-headed in a time of chaos. 
uh, is a skill that's been built over time because when I was a rookie and when I was a young associate, you know, you don't know enough to be able to answer all the questions to calm people down. So I think that, that comes with experience. But as to the confidence issue, you know, I was a wet behind the ears associate uh, trying cases in my second year telling people what to do. And it wasn't necessarily because I knew all the answers. Uh, my mentors taught me, uh, and I believe this to this day, that you're always asking questions and you're always learning. So even though you're giving advice to clients, you're learning a lot of times along with them, not, not learning how to do your job, but every case is different. Every situation is unique. There might be new law. There might be a new scenario that's fascinating that gets a little twist because you're in an industry that's a little new. You know, we're talking about disruption in business. We are right now navigating, and nobody has the answers, the world of AI as AI infiltrates its way into the legal system. And that is going to be revolutionary, revolutionary. And that doesn't mean that it's scary. It's just a matter of seeing how can it be leveraged and what can you do to be able to deal with it, to use it as a tool rather than some people see it as a threat. And when you're able to see things from that perspective and then confidently say, okay, we're going this way, we're doing this, and here's why, build through that, I think clients follow along and will be much calmer. Whereas if you're a service provider, regardless of the industry, legal professional specifically, but like if you think of it, think of it as the doctor, the doctor says, well, I definitely think it's a diagnosis of this, but it could be 15 other things. <laughs> Patients eyeballs fall out. It's the same thing when you're a lawyer. So were you that doctor <laughs> as a rookie? I don't know, but I'm going to pretend like I do. No. Um, I, I hid I, behind I, the uh, director that I was working with and made sure I'd say, what did you think? <laughs> yeah. You know, and I just want to point out that there's always discovery to be had, right? We're, we're indoctrinated culturally into thinking that there has to be an answer or that there must be a pre-described or prescribed outcome for what it is we're up to, what it is we're learning or the problems that we're solving. But the reality is, is it's always a work in progress. You're always learning as you go. So if we can take off the pressure of assuming that there is a prescribed outcome, it frees us up to sit in that more um, calm or joyful space to wonder, I wonder what's possible from here. Okay, we are accepting of what the situation itself is. And if we're not worried about needing to put a square peg into that round hole over there, and instead we're like, I wonder what else is square shaped, um, more progress can come from being in that state of uh, creativity or build than it can in terms of trying to make stuff happen. Um, and I think emotionally, that's what you say, what I've heard you say you're doing for people is like, well, let's just say we're here. We know what the problem is now and how we feel about it. Let's wonder what else is possible from here and help to kind of diffuse that into what gets to come next. Because again, if we upend the entire industrial age thinking that we've all had for a couple hundred years and put on the, you know, creative hat, the, the problem solving hat that we are naturally attuned to, that's our nature as humans is to solve problems and to be able to look for patterns and connections of ways things fit together to create a new outcome, to create a new widget, to create a new industry, you know, AI's really not that different in that regard. You know, people felt the same way when books came out. Oh my God, you're going to just sit and waste your life and read all day long. Or America Is that the online. case now? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I agree. I, I remember, I'm, I'm old enough to remember when uh, this uh, cool thing called the internet and everybody getting on America Online and all, all of a sudden doing uh, research with Encyclopedia Britannica, but doing it on a computer rather than from the hard books was revolutionary. And I think, I think that you're 100% right, because when it comes to any type of problem solving, regardless, uh, I'll use, for example, the, the field that you work in as an example. If everybody that wanted to think about getting involved in real estate or, or, or some type of business work needed to have somebody say, what's the guarantee of what's going to happen in the market? No one would commit. Because you may be able to look at historical patterns, you may be able to tell people, generally speaking, what looks good, what doesn't look good, and give specific advice when it comes to that. But at the end of the day, someone who's involved in business, somebody who's making business decisions, takes it with some calculated risk. The key is, 
having enough information that is possible and advice from people that have the experience it's possible to make an educated decision. There's still risk involved in an educated decision, but that's a heck of a lot better than making the decision without any advice, without any data. That's called going to the casino. And I like going to the casino once in a while, but those odds aren't that great. No, they usually favor the house and not you. Uh, but I love what you're saying here about calculated risk. Assuming that there's no risk and a prescribed end is the recipe for staying stuck. It's the recipe for continued frustration and for failure. If you're wanting perfection, it doesn't exist. It's a theory and a myth that we've kind of taken on as some truth, even though it isn't. And like the age of disruption is allowing us to see that, wow, everything isn't as I thought it was. There are more places for um, innovation. And there's also places where I was taking risk that I had no idea. I jumped out of a freaking plane once with the cousin who had done it once or twice before. I had somebody strapped to my back, thank God. But like, I just trusted that these people had gone up in planes, learned how to pack the pack and pull the cord at the right time so I didn't become splat. But I myself didn't go and do all that research around aerodynamics and all of this stuff that goes into making parachuting out of an airplane possible. I looked to the people who had the experience to mitigate my risk. And that's all we're really doing when people step into the entrepreneurial realm, whether it's looking into building a passive income real estate business, or they're looking to mitigate some of the risks in the existing business that they have and figure out problems they never saw coming. But they're going to talk to people like us who can see some things coming. None of us has a crystal ball that can see all of the things coming. And the fact that we've had exposure and experience out here in the real world, seeing nuances and different scenarios and how other things relate to each other, the patterns that we see in our respective disciplines, that's what allows people to trust us because we know more of the unknowns than they do. And now as professionals, we can appreciate we don't know all of the unknowns. We're just much more equipped and more confident in ourselves to know that when something we don't know comes up, we have a lot more resources and a lot more experience to be able to figure it out. And that gives our clients comfort. That gives the people who rely on what we do a measure of like, okay, I know you're not perfect. I know that you're, you don't have a crystal ball that decide with that actuality or that, um, what is the, what is the word? Um, destiny is not predestined, right? Mm -hmm. Because we've traveled a road that allowed us to grow. So at the end of the day, our services aren't that different. It's just that you are really well versed there in legal and bringing people from frustration to calm around creating solutions that affect a lot of other places in their life. And it, like, it's a needed service because you have the desire to have the aptitude and now you have the experience to be able to bring people down a path that you've walked a hundred million times before. And like, right. you probably have clients, hopefully that don't come back to you with the same problem every time, but they do come back to you because they have the confidence that you can help them create solutions, right? Uh, that That's right. And, and sometimes once in a while, they come up, come up with the same problems and they usually say, remember when I told you? Those are always fun conversations. <laughs> but the, and do you say, remember I told you so? And uh, I've, I've had one or two of those conversations, but thankfully they don't happen too often. Um, I it's very that's very well said, Alyssa, and and I and I will say like you know a good example is the impact of AI and, and a reason I use that as an example for for this. So in the legal field, and this goes to addressing some of the points about trying to figure out we can't we can't predict everything, but the educated consumer, the consumer that is trying to get the data, goes to uh, trusted service providers to be able to give them advice on issues that they have such as yourself, myself. With AI, we know, at least in terms of measuring, when you look at data, when you look at people that are writing about it and what the capabilities are, at least what their what their expected capabilities are to be, because we don't know if that's going to be Skynet and this is going to end up being the uh, precursor to Terminator, we don't know, um, is that by way of example in the legal field, AI has the ability to be able to cut out a lot of the work that traditionally in big firms, uh, associate attorneys would do. Uh, doing searches to create uh, summaries on a mediation, um, doing massive review of huge amounts of data and what's called document review. When we have a big case trying to find the nuggets that are important 
to take the trial, to do exhibits. Those types of tools are already coming out or already exist. And what that does is it creates huge disruption because in large firms that used to charge hourly rates for a team of associates handling a case that had 100,000 documents, uh, a corporation or an insurance company may not want to pay that anymore. They may want to just pay a fee for an AI um, uh, machine or program to do that search. But here's what AI can't do from at least what we know of today. AI can't hire clients. AI can't argue in court. AI cannot specifically deal with some of the strategic determinations and ethical determinations that you make when you're either in a courtroom or dealing with a negotiation and what have you now. Who knows whether that'll ever happen, but Based on the data we've seen, the advice that I have been giving people in the legal industry, which goes to the notion of at least having kind of a confidence and understanding of, you know, whether to make risks is, if you're a young lawyer, start getting clients. Start getting clients immediately. Because 10 years from now, it may be that your review of case law and drafting of a document, what have you, is mostly automated. But this, this conversation, conversations with other folks, helping them to solve their problems, guiding them there. People are always gonna need guidance. They're always gonna need another human being to be able to give them advice that they can rely upon. That, at least as far as we know, is not subject to disruption, hopefully anytime soon. But if you don't adapt in any business to the disruption that's coming, you can be that person that is a fantastic memo writer and does their work very well, or a great anal analytics person in any industry that all of a sudden doesn't have a job that goes the way of the typewriter because the job gets replaced, just like the people that made typewriters got replaced, just like the people that made the printing press got replaced. This, this is human history as technology grows. So everybody has to be cognizant of it and think about it and be prepared to be able to make adjustments, just like you said. Absolutely. So agility is the and the ability to connect and advise are two of the main skill sets that we are going to need going forward um i have really enjoyed our time here so far i feel like we're only at the tip of the iceberg so i'd love to have you back um so where can people find you um, to engage your services i know it's geographically limited to florida for the litigation piece but I'm over here in Western PA and you've been a fountain of knowledge and resource for me. So if someone is vibing with what you say and wants to hear more about how you're leading people and maybe some of the resources you've connected with, how can people find you? Okay, well, thank you for that. So my law firm is uh, Trip Scott PA. So I'm down in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, which uh, yesterday was uh, subject to a lot of flooding. So after this, I'm gonna have to go buy a canoe. <laughs> um, but uh, with that being said, um, I'm very happy to speak with, uh, with uh, anybody about any issues. If they have any questions or comments or wish to reach out, my email is hls at uh, tripscott.com. That's T-R-I-P-P-S-C-O-T-T.com. And the direct line to my desk is 954-765-2908. Beautiful. And it's a good thing this is recorded. So you can go back in case you missed that. Um, huge resource in my life. I'm so happy to bring him here to you. And again, this is not the last time. This is just the first. Thank you so much for your perspective on how I, AI fits into the pattern of human history. The fact that being connected and compassionate with people, helping them bring them from frustration into a place of what problems can be solved, solution mindset versus stuck mentality. Um, and we had such other uh, amazing topics show up that I'm sure I'm forgetting at this point. Um, but I cannot wait to see what you all think about the conversation we're having and what questions you have for Henny when he does come back. So drop in the comments some of the nuggets you're taking away here and also some of the things that you want us to discuss next. So for now, Please come join me every Monday morning. We broadcast at 7.30 a.m. Eastern time on YouTube. So until next time, friends, same bat time, same bat channel, rise and shine, and we'll see you next time. Henny, thanks a million for being here with us. Thank you for having me. Cheers. Cheers.